Hello and welcome to this Mithril Money Securities Investment 101 lecture. This is uh, an introduction to stock indexes. We're going to be looking at two things in this lecture. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the purpose of, uh, of indexes. And then we shall be looking at some examples of some indexes. Now, the actual construction of indexes, we're going to leave to the next lecture. That's where we're going to look at price weighting and we're going to look at market cap weighting. If if you're happy and comfortable with indexes and you just want to see how pro, uh, how index sizes are calculated, you might want to skip ahead to the uh, to the next lecture. Okay, for those who want to go through this, then so we have the purpose of indexes. There are several purposes, and perhaps the first kind of purpose is uh, often you'll be watching the tube late at night. Okay, and there'll be some talking head jabbering away on there. And then I'll point at some chart and say, today the Dow Jones went up. And on other days they'll say, today the Dow Jones went down. And some days they'll say, today the Dow Jones stayed roughly the same. So it's often a good way for newspapers and television programs and so on to give you a kind of um, litmus paper barometer reading of a particular economy. And, you know, the index will be, oh, it's terrible, it's a terrible recession. And then the index will go, up, oh, it's a fantastic period, it's brilliant. And then obviously there'll be another bust following that. So this will be time along the bottom. And this will be index size along the y-axis there. And we can mark out booms and busts and good times and bad times by following an index. So I'm going to go into the, the, the real details of construction of an index in the next lecture. But typically what will happen if we take three companies, we take, uh, you know, daddy company, mummy company and baby company. I'll just do an index. This is the Mithril Money Index with three companies in it. And that starts out at $30 a share. This is $20 a share and this is $50 a share. Then what we do is we, we uh, this is day one. We add up all the shares. That comes to 100. Uh, then we'll divide it by a special number called the divisor. And uh, let's say we'll divide this one by 0 0.1. This will be a fixed number on day one to make a, a 1000 index. And then the next day, daddy company goes to 60, mummy company goes to 40, and baby company goes to 30. Let's add those numbers up. That comes to 130. That's not very good, 130, is it? 130, let's get rid of the evidence there. Let's, let's remove the evidence. 130. We use the same divisor we used on day one, which was 0 0.1. Divide that by 0 0.1. And we end up with 1,300. So the index has moved to uh, to 1,300. But again, we'll go into more depth on that in the next lecture. Now, that's a simple price-weighted index, which has gone from 1,000 on day one to 1,300 on day two. So we just draw that graph quickly. Okay, so we were at 1,000. And then, oh, then we've moved to 1,300. Bang. Uh, that's just price-weighted. So baby company could be a tiny company with one share and daddy company could be a monster company with a billion shares and yet you know baby company is having a you know a significant effect on the index by going from 50 to 30 it's being counterbalanced by daddy company going from 30 to 60 but baby company is still having a big effect because it's all just simple price weighting um, to take into account the number of shares in the market cap would be market cap weighted. And again, go to the next lecture to see uh, see a detailed way of uh, explaining how that is done. But the most famous kind of price weighted index in the world is called the Dow Jones index, or the Dow Jones 30, or the Dow 30, or the Dow. You pick your name, take your choice. And what we do with the Dow Jones price weighted index is that uh, we take the largest company, I do apologise if I've not covered your state properly here, in the United States, so I'll best, best put Alaska in there, and uh, Hawaii, I'll stick New York on there as well. 
Um, what we do with the Dow Jones is we take the 30 most representative companies. So we might go from Microsoft, uh, Apple, um, General Motors, somewhere in Iowa. There must be a big company in Iowa. Um, good friend of mine lives in Iowa, called Michael McKay. Um, so hopefully he's forgiven me for this. Uh, there might be some big companies in New York as well. We take the 30 biggest companies representing each particular sector. So probably couldn't be Microsoft and Apple, probably just one or the other. And then we add up all their prices and then we divide them by the divisor that was created on the first day of the Dow Jones and which might be manipulated over time to represent share splits and so on and different companies coming in and going out. But essentially should be the same number and we see where we are. And we all started off on day one, whenever that was, maybe back in the 1930s sometime. And now we're at 14,000 or so. So the share prices have gone up 14 times essentially in that period, however long that period was. So that's a simple price weighted index. Again, most indexes are um, um, market cap weighted, but the Dow Jones does give a nice kind of barometric reading of how the entire US economy is going, but it's, it's very, very simplified. Now, if we look at, say, the UK, which I know quite well, uh, we have a more market cap weighted index here. It's called the FTSE 100. Um, we take the top biggest companies in the UK, say Vodafone and 99 others, and we add up their market cap weightings and we see how they're doing and they're the share prices and so on on a daily basis, or actually it's every, I think it's every 15 seconds or something. This is done, and we publish this on a continuous basis while the markets are open. Um, now, the FTSE itself, it used to be a company that was jointly owned by the Financial Times and I think by the London Stock Exchange, but it's now its own kind of separate spun-off company. And they do indexes for the UK. They do them for all over the world. They do quite a few of them in Singapore, including the uh, the Straits Time Index, which covers the top 30 companies in Singapore. And um, they've been publishing these uh, these indexes for quite a long time. Now, a very similar in, oh, just before we go, the FTSE 100, top 100 companies in the UK, that covers 80% of the market capitalization of the UK. So a huge amount of, uh, wealth and capital is buried inside the FTSE 100. Now there are many many other FTSE uh, indexes including the FTSE All Share which essentially has all the kind of uh, public limited companies which are quoted on exchanges or quoted on the uh, London Stock Exchange exchanges in the UK. Now, we've got um, a very similar index of the FTSE 100 in the United States. So if we go back to the United States, another company called Standard & Poor create something called the S&P 500. And the S&P 500 takes the top 500 companies by market capitalization in the United States and adds up all of their uh, stock price changes and market cap changes on a regular basis <clears throat> to produce the S&P 500. It's so quite a similar index to the FTSE 100, but only for the top 500 companies in the United States. And this gives us figures we can quote on television programs. The S&P 500 today did this, FTSE 100 today did that. The FTSE Straits Time Index in Singapore did this, the Hong Kong Hang Seng Index did the other thing. Now, let's come to a second purpose then for indexes. And that is, so here's, let's just put an index over time. Let's call it the FTSE 100. And something we're going to cover much, 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 much later in this 101 course is something called beta, which is market risk. And let's assume for the moment that the overall market risk of the top 100, if you invested in the top 100 companies in the UK, 
according to the same formula the FTSE 100 index uses, you would have an overall level of risk in your portfolio of one. Your beta risk would be one. What a fund manager can do and say is I can construct a fund. So this is the Mithril Money, uh, the Mithril Money Magic Fund. Um, we only invest in the UK. We have a beta of one and we can beat the FTSE 100. So that's what we claim. This is all made up. Uh, I just made this up in the last five seconds. But imagine if I could do that, I would say I can get the same beta as the FTSE with my Mithril, uh, Mithril Money Magic Fund. And I can get that much of a performance gain over maybe that's over one year. So that's one year from today. So one year's time, I can do that much better than the FTSE 100. Well, you might want to consider investing in that person. Now, we do need to take off my cost because I'm not going to be cheap. Obviously, I've got to spend lots of money on research and on suits and on cakes and on bottles of red wine and first class air tickets and seven star hotels and so on. But even if after taking off my costs, I can still be better than the FTSE 100, then that's, you know, that's a, that's a good sound thing to claim. So my benchmark that I have chosen is the FTSE 100. If I can beat it, keep me, keep paying me. And if I don't beat it, then sack me. Because obviously, if I can't do as well as just, you know, a computer investing in the FTSE 100, tracking it with blindly, then obviously I'm no good. So uh, get rid of me and get somebody else. I'll just put your money blindly into the FTSE 100 index and track it. So that's the second purpose of indexes. That actually brings us neatly onto our third purpose, which is that we can use indexes as a tracking vehicle. So all we do is we get a computer and a computer programmer to write a little PHP script, which just moves our, or C++ script, which can just move our funds into the FTSE 100 because we believe, again, we'll cover this in, the, in, the, in a much later lecture when we talk about portfolio management. We believe in a thing called the efficient market hypothesis, uh, efficient market hypothesis. Uh, although we believe, yes, there is noise and daily volatility around the FTSE 100, which we could exploit if we wanted to trade on a second by second basis overall over something like a year, it's impossible to beat the market because, you know, thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of traders all around the world, all watching screens all day, all buying and selling and buying and selling and buying and selling on instantaneous news um, is making the market perform efficiently, maybe not on a daily basis, but definitely on a yearly basis. So don't bother spending money on Mithril Money Magic Fund and paying huge bonuses and huge salaries and first class air tickets and so on. Just put your money into um, the 100 top companies in the UK in the same way the FTSE index does it and, and just ride it up. Well, obviously you're gonna ride it down, but you're gonna ride it up and you're not gonna have to uh, waste so much money on investment managers. So that's another reason we will have indexes just as tracking vehicles. And then you invest in the tracking vehicles and blindly follow the, the curve up and uh, curve up and blindly follow the curve down. And overall, hopefully we'll start here and we'll end up here. Yes, there have been a few, you know, bad times, bad times. It started off with a bad time, but overall the general trend is up and it hasn't cost us a fortune in fees and fund management salaries. So that's a kind of another reason why we'd have indexes. Um, another in index, another reason for indexes, it's not, we're not just tracking the entire market all the time in every country. Often we want to track, um, say a global marketplace. So let's, uh, let's try and do Andy's map of the world. So there's, there's the Americas. Um, I'll do the UK to scale. There we are. Haha, <laughs> uh, kind of do Europe and Africa and so on. Uh, ooh, uh, 
And we'll go down here. Please do forgive me if I don't include your country. I'm trying this as quick as I can. Um, oh, oh, that'll have to do. Right. Oh, sorry, I messed up Australia. <laughs> don't want Australians. Oh, Lord of the Rings fans won't be very happy with me either. Best uh, stick that in there. Okay, so there's Andy's map of the world. UK to scale everywhere else. Oh, Madagascar. I'm sure, I'm sure there's millions of places I've missed. I do do apologise. Okay, so uh, maybe we're tracking gold mining. We're, we're not interested in a particular country. You know, the FTSE 100 would cover that. And the Singapore um, Straits Times Index would track that. And the, and then the, the Nikkei 225 would track Japan. And the, and the Hang Seng would track Hong Kong. And the S&P 500 would track the United States and the CAC 40 would track France and the DAX 30 would track Germany and so on. But what if I'm uh, only interested in gold mining? I'm interested in South African gold mining, Canadian gold mining, South American gold mining, Australian gold mining, and that's all I'm interested in. And what we could do is we could have an index which would track the gold mining industry. And it would only track every company to do with gold mining. So it would track the majors, which is the big companies like Newmont Mining, the miners, the smaller companies, which might have one or two mines, and the, the exploration companies, which are going around looking for new mines. So if you're one of those companies, then you're all part of the gold mining index. So if I just want to see how the gold mining companies are getting on, then I can look in that. Now, we could have three minor indexes couldn't we we could have a minor index only tracking the gold mining major companies we could have a gold mining index only tracking the minor companies and if you want some superb volatility and you can handle it a white knuckle ride we can track just the exploration companies and of course you can invest in those so let's say with miners minor miners so it's a terrible joke there minor gold mining companies Let's say there are, um, let's say there's a few of them. I don't know how many lines we've got here. So this is going to be minor gold miners. Now I know, because I'm clever that way, that you know one or two of these are going to do fantastically well. They're going to be double baggers, 10 baggers, 20 baggers, 50 baggers. The problem is, is I just don't know which ones are going to be the top ones. So, uh, and obviously some of these are going to be terrible as well. So, you know, this, that might be terrible and that might be terrible. But overall, I might be expecting a 50% gain over the whole year so what I do is I don't try and pick my winners I don't try to pick that one because I might pick that one by mistake I just invest in the whole index and I just buy the index a company will be buying and selling all of these companies uh, for me without knowing which ones are going to do well which ones are going to do badly and overall over one year the yellow ones will be brilliant the green ones will be terrible, the rest will be mediocre, I will get this 50% gain. At least that's the hope. Anyway, so we always live in hope. So I'll just smoke a cigar there. This Cuban cigar. So that's the hope. Anyway, so that's another purpose for, uh, for indexes. It's for you know, kind of, you want a particular sector, but you don't quite know which ones are going to do well in the particular sector. So there you go. That's how we, that's how we do that. Now, um, what else can I say? I think we've covered most things. I think we'll just go around the world again. Just a quick reiteration. So in France, let's do some blue, really, haven't I? Le bleu. Okay, we've got the Cotation Assisté en Continu Calante index tracking French companies, better known as the CAC 40. A brilliantly named index. Uh, top 40 companies in the US, sorry, not the US, in France. We've got the DAX 30. That's the Deutsche Aktien index. 
which is tracking the top 30 companies in Germany. We've got the S&P 500 in the US and the Dow Jones as our two major kind of tracking indexes. In the UK, we've got the FTSE 100. And if you want to go for all of the shares in the UK and all the exchanges, the FTSE All Share. Down in Singapore, we have the Straits Time Index, which is actually put together by the uh, FTSE company. And that's 30 companies in Singapore. In Hong Kong, we have the Hang Seng 48. And in Japan, we've got the Nikkei 225, tracking the top um, companies in Japan. There are many, 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 many other indexes. Um, they're all available on Wikipedia. Just do a Wikipedia indexes, stock markets, and you'll find hundreds and thousands of indexes on there. So we'll take a better look at price weighting and market cap weighting and the construction of indexes in the next lecture. But for now, that's it. I'll see you next time.